25th of June 2010 and I'm here with our inveterate, wonderful, amazing Mrs. Pat. <laughs> we'll just call them Mrs. Pat. Okay. <laughs> she should be almost Dr. Pat, but anyway, <laughs> the other work that she's done. Um, anyway, I have a wildlife carer here who I call Pat and um, she's she brings me bird after bird after bird from the other side of Sydney to uh, to get her get my opinion and uh, my care in conjunction with her so this time and much appreciated too. this time what have you brought me it looks like a sulfur crested cockatoo that's right yes it looks um, like a female one by my first impression of the that the eyes are quite dark but uh, anyway I don't know um, okay. But what's the story with this one? Well, one of our carers picked it up last night. Yep. Um, it was on a balcony. Yes. And home. it wasn't flying. It was just cowering in the corner, and there was a cat. Um, a cat was trying to harass it. Right. But um, it was just cowering in the corner. Even with the cat, it didn't try and fly off. Right. I've checked. Um, uh, checked the wings as best I can with my yep. amateurish way. And yep. I don't find anything too right. dramatic, but you might find a break or a... Oh, we don't know until we look, but anyway, it's, yeah. not, it's not obvious to me at a glance. I'm just looking at the birdie front on, and I'm, um, I think it'll be the left... No, no, it may be the left wing. I think the left wing is just hanging slightly lower than the, than the right one. Oh, it is too, on, right? yes. Yes, right? it is so too. I'll be looking at... Um, that's my first impression, just looking at the birdie from the outside of the cage. The, I always look for bilateral symmetry, and um, apart from obvious injuries, so we're just taking note that this bird's got plenty of powder on its beak, um, and its plumage is in good order. So, cytosine beak and feather disease is so common in Sydney, uh, in the wild, wild cockatoos, as well as pet cockatoos, that that's one of the things I always look for. And this bird appears healthy in that region, um, in that respect. If it had beak and feather disease, uh, it would be likely to have a lack of powder on the beak, um, and therefore the beak would be black instead of having the, the powdery greyish film on it. So that's a very good sign, and the same applies to its feet. So, and it's got a full crest and full plumage, and the plumage is free from fault lines. Um, not quite, but most most of the feathers are good. The nostrils are nice and clear, the eyes look bright, um, but the left wing is just drooping a fraction and it's drooping in such a way that I suspect we'll find a shoulder injury but we will just mm. go through and see what the story is. All right, so I don't know if this is a wild bird or an escaped pet, but I will treat it as a wild bird until proven otherwise. So my first aspect of what I'm doing is bringing calmness into myself, bringing um, peace, calm and extending by intent that energy to this little birdie. Um, when we're taking a bird out of a cage, um, a wild bird in particular, it's a good idea to have, and particularly when they can bite very, very hard, such as cockatoos can, it's a good idea just to um, get yourself organised. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling the edge of this towel and I'm choosing one end of the towel, which in this case will be this end, which I'll be using to wrap around the bird's neck. So I'm going to bring that in over here. And I'm going to just go quietly now. I'm going to maintain eye contact with the birdie at this stage. I'm maintaining eye contact and I'm just bringing this around the bird quietly. We're ready for here. And I'm just working quietly, thank you, and sending peace and love. And just getting this around the birdie's neck. And we'll just bring this part down. Sometimes it doesn't work and you always have a second plan ready cockatoos are not the easiest birds to handle but we can move to the other end of the thing if he wants to climb up there 